Now that we're in the water, let's do a few more basic checks before we start our discharge measurement. Remember, we get to those from the utilities menu. And those are the raw data and the beam checks. I'm gonna hit raw data first. That starts the instrument pinging, setting out that acoustic signal. And we're just reading the data that comes back to make sure it's operating on a basic level. Do I see velocities? Are they reasonable? In this case, yes, we see them graphed in real time. We'll scroll down. Are these SNRs, are these signal strengths reasonable? And are they enough to make a measurement? Uh, for example, in a really clear and cold stream, they might be low. There might not be enough scattering material in the water. At least you can find that out before you go through the measurement process. In this case, it's fine, so let's keep going. Our temperature looks pretty steady. Uh, sometimes you might need a few minutes for the temperature sensor to equilibrate, uh, but here it looks pretty good. The tilt, you can verify that the tilt sensor is working, will be useful when you start your measurement. And uh, what's your battery? Another chance to check that. So that's the raw data. We verified the probe is working. Let's go back to utilities and start the beam checks. There's two beam checks. The first one is the automated beam check. I'll hit start on that, and the instrument's going to just check um, a few parameters over a few seconds of data uh, related to the signal strength, uh, the signal peak position, and so on. Uh, when this is done, uh, you'll, you'll hear a beep and you'll see the results. In this case, our beam check passed according to the instrument's uh, criteria. So let's go back and go to the, um, the regular beam check. Now for those of you who are familiar with the original flow checker, this is like the original beam check in that it shows you a graph of each beam and the signal strengths with each ping. So you can see uh, on the graph and visualize in space where your peak position is, how high your signal strength is, and you can record several seconds of this data. So I'm going to hit the record button and just have this on file. I can't stress how important it is to collect these beam check data before you begin a measurement. It's nice to have when you reference and justify the quality of your measurement. Or in the worst case scenario, if there is a problem and you do need to contact support, you'll have these data for us to evaluate and we can do some troubleshooting. So always record uh, a good few seconds of beam check data uh, before you begin your measurement. So our beam check uh, file has been created and we're going to close out. These are our pre-measurement checks. They all look good. I think we're ready to take a measurement.